so yeah 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 so just vibes and but this is hopefully a short right here a little short just vibes and was was jesus as you say jesus of the bible aka yeshua yeshua hamashiach Jesus christos was jesus christ what you think was jesus christ a, a buddhist i've been hearing ones and ones reason on that i think it was the mighty hebrew i'm not too sure on the side of the platform he was talking and reasoning and based on yeshua's travels he went to india he said some historical evidence now we've heard about this idea but he basically said that when he looks at it that yeshua of nazareth yeshua hanot aka jesus of nazareth jesus christ was a buddhist so what sayest thou what sayest thou here i'm with my brother ross seymour here this is ross iodonis yad in here we're just vibes and just reasoning was yeshua was jesus a buddhist I know it sounds it sounds a little crazy. I thought he was a Christian. Some people say, but what say is that? <laughs> well, I had a similar reason with my brethren before he passed, Van Benjamin, right? And it was not the exact same question, but the reasoning was similar. And his answer would probably be the same as what we all reasoning is when he answered me and saying that um, that would be an affirmative yes because. In order to understand humanity and deal with us as humans, you have to be every man. Mm. And being every man doesn't mean that you have to do the same thing a man do to be that man. So if a man is a murderer or a thief or some kind of degenerate type person, you don't have to be that person. Uh, like when I said be that person, you don't have to do what they did mm. in order to be that person. You are wise enough as a human to know what stealing is, what murdering is, what these things are. So you could put yourself in that shoes to be that man. If you go into a, a organization or go into some kind of um, membership or a group of virgins or whatever it is, and they have a, a different philosophy than yours or ideology than yours, you don't go in there immediately trying to push your philosophy and your ideology on these people. You go in there and you listen and see what these people are about and try to understand these people. So by you doing that, that means you have become these people just by trying to understand them. Mm. Not necessarily saying you have to do what they do, but emphasize it, like, like having empathy with somebody mm. is a different than having sympathy with somebody. Mm, you see, mm, mm, sure, when you sure. have empathy, that means you you put yourself in that person's position to see what the dynamics are of being in that particular shoe. Mm. So when you say is Jesus is was Jesus, you know I don't like to say Jesus because he doesn't say that in the Bible. It says Jesus. I like I, I just want to clarify that. Facts, facts, facts. It, facts. it says Jesus. Mm, J E slash S-U-S. It, it's telling you how to pronounce the word. And is he a Buddhist? Yes, he was a Buddhist. He was an atheist. He was everything. <laughs> because he didn't discriminate against who he spread the word to. Mm -hmm. His only discrimination was in parables sometimes. When certain people that was unworthy was there, when a message was being spoken, he'd speak it in a parable. Mm -hmm. he, but he didn't hide it from you. Mm. <laughs> you know so we have to understand the be in the shoes of each person and each man mm. so I, I I let you go from there for a second and I'll go and use for a minute mm, mm, mm. very good point Ross very good point brother Seymour right there I think excellent point of Vaughn Benjamin you know, Yah bless his soul, may he rest in shalom and rise in kavod, in kavod, in kavod, in glory. You know, to the martyrs, you know, for the truth, you know, that gave their life. You know, for the proclaiming and the living, you know what I mean, to their best ability, manifesting that word of truth. Vaughn Benjamin, a.k.a. A.K. Becca, and to Ra Seymour for that word right there. And that person perfectly answers it right there because what I heard one's might hear it and say, What was Jesus? Well, you know, what they say, Jesus, but properly, Jesus, you know, from an English perspective, or Yeshua, you know, from the Hebrew perspective, was he a Buddhist, you know? Um,
it sounds, it sounds, you know, at first you just hear how it sounds. It's almost like Yeshua Hanotri himself said, don't judge by appearance, but judge by righteousness. You know, and the good point you made that Vaughn shared and answered when, when it says, um, observe, he said, observe to his own people, to the Yehudi, the Jews, even we, the black Jews, he said, you know, observe what the, you know, what they observe, like the Pharisees and scribes who he was reproving and rebuking and correcting, you know, for their kind of going off, you know, because actually the Pharisees and the scribes and a lot of them, they were actually good at a previous time before they degenerated. I, I use this likeness of hip hop, you know, hip hop today and those of us who are old enough to know hip hop from yesterday. You know, or reggae, even roots reggae back in the 70s, you know, and the message. And then you hear some of the same music, but the message is different. So the same thing was happening, you know, with the with the with the black Jewish or the Yehudi, the Jewish movement in the New Testament sense. They say observe what they observe, whatever they bid you to do, observe, you know, but don't do after their works, like observe what they observe. You know, the Torah, you know, you know, certain things that pertain to scripture and righteousness, but don't do after their works. So identifying with every man is is the way. In fact, I have this verse on the screen right here um, It's from first Corinthians, because when when the eye brought out the answer before we started this record right here, this little short right here, I said, hold on for a moment, because it was summing up. Right. Even this word sound. Right. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20, he says, this is Paul. I call him Rabbi Shaul, like Yeshua, also from the proper perspective, is our, when we say rabbi, in the language, our master, our teacher. You know, our teacher of Torah, our teacher of Jah's instruction. Not just teaching like what's written, but teaching us how to live it out. You know, like he was, he was, like we say, the rabbi of rabbis. Not only did he have the knowledge of Torah, the knowledge of scripture, even the other Pharisee, or the other rabbis and the other scholars, the teachers, they were amazed. But they said, how did he know letters? You know what I mean? N never having learned. What they were saying is that he didn't learn from them, but he knew what, right, you know, what, what they knew. But he wasn't in their crew. Because even there, he was able to identify with every man. So Paul says this right here. He said, and to the Jews, the Yehudi, right? I became a Jew, a Yehudi, that I may gain the Yehudim, the Jews, to them that are under the law, those who know like Torah and live by Torah, as under the Torah, under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. Then he says in verse 21, to them that are without Torah, those who are not from that discipline, that way, that culture, that we say belief system as without Torah. But, but then here in the KJV Bible at first Corinthians chapter nine, verse 21, if you look at it in the good King James Bible, there's a parenthetical, something they put in parentheses. But I've noticed that these parentheticals seem to be arbitrary, translators translated. When I look at some older manuscripts, some Ethiopic manuscripts, other manuscripts, these parentheticals are not there. So what Paul is saying, so to those who are under Torah, like who are in Torah, like Yehudi, like Jews, you know, and Yeshua was a Jew, according to the translation, he says, you know, we worship that which we know, you worship what you don't know, right? Salvations of the Jews, right? To them that are without Torah, as without Torah, right? Even though he says being not without Torah or law to God, to Hilehim, to Elohim, but under the, notice what he says, but under the law, right? Here he says he's under the Torah, under the law to Christ. You know, you hear Christians saying, we're not under the law, we're not under the law, but here's a verse where even Paul, the great, the great apostle to the Gentiles is saying, but under the Torah to Christ. So even though he's reasoning with these people who don't know Torah and not into the Hebraic, the Judaic way, he can still reason with them as, you know, as, as being one without Torah, but he's not really without that to Elohim, but he's talking to men and people and he's under the direction instruction to Messiah. But what's the purpose? That I might gain them. That I might gain them, like reach them that are without Torah. So he didn't say, well, if you don't have the Torah, if you're not a Jew, I ain't speaking to you. But the, one more part right here where he says, to the weak, 
became I as weak. What the brother man is saying about that empathy, right? That empathy, you know, having empathy in order to reach that I might gain. You see what I'm saying? That I might gain, that might reach, that might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men. So he's like saying he's made this way, but he's making himself able to reach all, right? That I might by all means save some. You get that right there? By all means, save some. Because even doing that, you're not going to reach all. You know what I mean? You're not going to reach all. No. But you have to even be willing to, as the brother pointed out, to empathize, right? In order to even reach some. You know, and come to a higher level. Some are still going to be like, well, I'm I'm a Buddhist. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's kind of like, I could see his reaching out to the Buddhists, but he's not really one of us. You know what I'm saying? But other Buddhists will be like, yeah, yeah, he he's not. He's a Jew or Yehudi, but he's making the link, that, that common denominator. You know, like the, like the ambassador, you know, rep, a reparation ambassador was saying when he's talking about Ubuntu. And he was like taking some of the key phrases in some of the different kind of religions or faiths or spiritual systems. I was thinking the same thing because if you look at Buddhism itself, right, and look at who Buddha is, we break down that. We realize that Buddhism, is, that, that Buddhism itself is an African spiritual system that was brought to, to, um, like, to, like to the Far East, which we call China or Asia or that, that specific area over there. So these are ancient African spiritual systems that has been taught for centuries that is part of our covenant. So when he asks, is the Messiah a Buddhist, you should ask if the, the Buddhist got his stuff from the teachings of the Messiah. Mm. Where did the Buddhist get his teachings from? It came from African spiritual system. Where What's the foundation of Africa? of African spiritual systems. So these are the questions we need to ask because you can't put the cart before the um, the horse whereas you ain't going nowhere. Mm. And, and and on the screen, people see I'm, I'm downloading a couple of pics because the brother just brought something forward and would like to segue on this even where he's mentioning that Buddha, well, a lot of people don't know, but more people are beginning to learn the truth of is that Buddha was... A black man in today's terminology you know maybe those are different nations that they call people back in the past but as we say well whether one is black or white as one can see buddha was the original buddha the oldest buddha you know was a black man it's like it's like the whole christ thing too right we know and we've gotten to know that yeshua right and the christ the christians the biblical israelites they were what we would call today black people but we can see how later on it's kind of like pe other people adapt or adopt. I don't know whether in truth or not, you know. I'm sure some probably truly, but they adapt this. Like, for example, Buddha was Indian, right? What would they call, like, what they would call today India from, like, Hindus Kush, right? Yet, Buddhism is known in China. So if you look at Buddhas, the modern Buddhas around the world, like the, the, the imagery of Buddha, you'll see that in India, he looks like the modern Indians, the nowadays Indians, not as the ancient, more, you could say, Ethiopian, you could say black, dark, you know, so-called untouchable. You know what I'm saying? The untouchable Indians. And so the same thing to do with Christianity is that we see the older pictures. You know what I mean? We see the older pictures and the you know of of the archaeological images of um, even Jesus, you know the, the all these icons that are coming out, right? That are way older than you know the you know the Caesar Borgias even image. But then what happens? You know they adapt it and adopt it, and they start to paint over it. They start to paint it in their image. So as the black, the the righteous black seed, is teaching the true spiritualities. Even prior and before the coming of, we could say, the word of Elohim, you know, within the Hebraic Judaic tradition, you know, we can see the same pattern. You know what I mean? Where we find that there's these black ones, you know, the black ones, you know what I'm saying? At the very beginning, and other people gravitate to it, even in China. China is not the origin of what we would call Buddhism, right? But yet the Chinese people, like the modern Chinese people, have, a, have adopted 
You know what I mean? Many of them adopted Buddhism. You know what I'm saying? But over time, so that they can appropriate it. When I say appropriate, like so they can like take it to themselves. They can receive it. They can kind of eat it. You know what I'm saying? They have to kind of season it their way. So that's why you see Buddha in China looks Chinese. You get me? But And, and Buddha in modern India looks like the modern Indians. But then when we go to the historical record, you know what I'm saying? We get to the historical record. The thing that we find is that the original Buddha, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, was... Have those features that you can't deny. Yeah, the original Buddha, yeah, the original Buddha was a black man, right? And and I'm bringing this up right here, but this, there's something that I like to get to right here. Like I'm showing a couple of pictures where they found... And you know what? One thing about the, a lot of these artifacts where you see the big, you know, the big... um. You know, full lips, the big full nose, the full features, the 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 peasy or peppercorn, you know, here. That definitely is is a way of describing and and, and, and expressing somebody who has, for lack of a better word, African and black features. You know what I mean? Now on Jesus, on, on Yeshua, Yeshua and Buddha, I like to introduce something. I mentioned this before to you. Do you know anything about the Aquarian Gospel? You ever heard of anything called Aquarian Gospel? I don't know, but I have never, I, I'm, I, like, I don't have the book. Okay, I, 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 I got the, I think I downloaded the PDF. I don't know which phone it's on, but if I download the PDF, I'll send the I. I mean, does, does I look at PDFs? It's good to get a hard copy, but if... At first, sometimes I, I'm reading a PDF. I like it so much, I eventually get a hard copy. You know, because I like books like that. The eye is cool for PDF, right? I take this conscious meal anyhow I can get it. Ah, you, so so there's food, and the food is there, and you yes, can eat. food is there, we shall eat. eat. <laughs> and, 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 and bless your name, and bless the Hashem. Okay, so here, here's what we do right here. There's something, when I heard the whole thing, I think, like I said, I think the brother is a, is a mighty Hebrew. It looked like the mighty Hebrew, but I might be incorrect, but I think it's mighty Hebrew. And I heard the clip where he's saying that Buddha or Yeshua is a Buddhist. When you look at the teachings and other things, historically speaking, he's a, Bo a Buddhist. And this is bugging people out. Some people are trying to say that, you know, well, we are trying to claim everything. You know, you, know, you, you hear that argument, right? That we're trying to claim everything. Like black people, these Afrocentrics. You, you hear these people out there that's trying to like they were trying to sneak this us, but now they're becoming more overt because a lot of the 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 pro black people in the knowledge and sharing the these 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 art and facts are waking up people in addition to black people. You know what I mean? You have a lot of other people who are not under this four hundred year thing, and they see this and say, "Wow." This is facts. Look at Buddha right here. These are pictures of ancient black Buddha. He was a revolutionary freedom fighter prince against the Euro-Aryan Hindu caste system that downpressed and exploited the indigenous black Indians. You mean the indigenous black Indians, the Hindus Kush? Now, here is... And, and that's exactly the Hindus Kush. We have to remember that that part, what we call India today, was under Ethiopian rule. For centuries. That's one thing I liked about His Excellency, the, the, the Ambassador Reverend Kwame Kamau, in his presentation, right? When he presented his presentation to us, um, he spoke about, you know, how Sumer and all of those ancient kingdoms were black. Yes. Because they want to pigeonhole us to argue over Egypt, to try to say Egypt wasn't black. And we, we keep falling that trap. You notice that, right? We keep because they find some some lighter skin statues or statues that they scraped off all the melanation to. Because sometimes it was light. You know, black people have all sort of complexions. You know what I mean? I mean, without the white man, apart yeah. from the white man, we already have these complexions. These yeah, the, the, yeah, face, we the, yeah the, the mama, the mama there, right? So what I like to share right here is something from the Aquarian Gospel now. This is another reasoning that I wanted to bring to my brother and for us to reason on, because some people talk about the Waspy Bible is the real Bible, and, and others talk about different scriptures, and I find a lot of our black people are kind of running away from the Bible, or at least the King James and the 400-year downpression. I do understand that, but I think that as ones really know the truth, 
Not that one's going to return to the so-called Bible, but will recognize that much has been lost in translation. And sometimes we go to other, you know, other spiritualities, you know what I mean? And it helps to clarify things that the whitewashing, right? When I say whitewashing, I'm not just saying whitewashing the image. People don't know that they whitewash the text. Yes. You see, we read in the words, but we don't see the whitewash when we read in the words. We read it in black and white. I'm not talking about the white that the black is in, the black and white, but it's it's the it's how it's translated, right? And then how it was preached to us. So I want to share the Aquarian gospel, the Aquarian gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, this is briefly briefly said, right? And and this is a quick a quick little summary right here. When we talk about the Aquarian gospel, I'm showing the ones on the screen, Aquarian gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the cover that I'm always used to. It's by somebody named Levi. Now, this particular book, not only myself, but others have said, even though they say this book was written or was not written, but was inspired, like, you know, what they call it like what they call it, some type of writing. It's a kind of like where somebody is, I'm not going to say they're possessed, but they're getting a spiritual inspiration and like, like they call it rapid writing or something like that. I might not have the right terminology. I know when ones check out this video and they know the right terminology, they're going to put it there. Thank you in advance. But it basically, he said he wrote this book or was inspired to write this book in a short period of time. I've heard some people say overnight, but like a very short period of time. But the content of the book is true. When I say there's a lot of truth in the content, it really seems to kind of give a clarity, right, about what we already have in the canonical Bible. I'm not saying it gives backstories, but it fits Right. At least some of us have seen that it fits. Now, this same Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ, for those who don't know, is the full name is Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ, philosophic and practical basis of the religion of the Aquarian age of the world and of the church universal transcribed from the book of God's remembrances known as the Akashic Records by Levi with introduction by somebody named Eva S. Downing, a PhD, right? Now, these books came out, like, I think back in the late 1800s and 1900s. There seemed to be a lot of books that came out through a lot of, for lack of a better word, white people, spiritualists. I think it was first published in um, 1908 or something like that. True, true. I'm pointing to this book right here because this is one of the books that that we find to be interesting and Judging it by the content, right, and comparing it with what we received, you know, say from the canonical, I say that this has a lot of truth. Now, people have seen this guy, I think this is the guy Levi, that then the Kashik record is said to be like, how can I say, like every thought, every idea, right, um, goes into a, a kind of like in the firmament. Some people have an idea that it's in the firmament, and the Kasha is like the ether. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you know, we pick up something and we pick up something like from the ether. You know, it's almost like some would say we are tapping into what's known as the Akasha. Right. You know, like we could say the the subconsciousness of humanity, like all the thoughts of everybody who ever lived on the face of the earth, who lived and breathed. The ideas are like stored. There's like a record that is like in the heavens, so to speak, like it's in the ear. You know, when it says to meet the Lord in the ear, it's in the ear. And I believe that when it's about the rapture, it's not really talking about that we're going to literally go up into the sky and our clothing is going to fall off and we'd be naked like in some of these counterfeit Christian movies, but that we're going to meet him in a level of consciousness. Irregardless of maybe you a Buddhist, you know what I mean? And and I'm a, 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 a Taoist or a Confucianist or you're a Jew and I'm a Christian, but if we're meeting in the spirit and of truth, we can be able to empathize, like you're saying, with one another. You know what I mean? And even though you might have your belief, right, that you choose, and I have my belief, and on the outside, like Haile Selassie, and Imam Haile Selassie says, even though our historic forms bind us, like, to certain groups, you know, the Christian goes about in the Christian way, and say the Jew go by in a Jew way, right? And the Muslim go by in a Muslim way. But we can tell by historic Ethiopia that these different peoples of different religions still could have a level 
as close to paradise as was then possible. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Where, where they had differences of belief, but they shared much in common. You know what I mean? And they didn't fight to like make the other person what they believe. You know what I mean? They could live in a community where, oh, so-and-so is a Muslim but and so-and-so is a Christian, but we're not arguing over religion. And that shows how black peoples, the originators of these spiritualities in a place like Ethiopia, historically, right, from time to time have had had these kind of kingdom, kingdom of heaven on earth. That brings me to another point about whether going to heaven is 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 a is really what the Bible is saying, right? Because we believe that it's supposed to be bringing the kingdom of heaven. You know what I mean? This you know what I mean? This perfect heavenly type to earth. So I want to share I that somebody might have proved me wrong, but mm -hmm. I I don't see nowhere in the Bible where it says we we ourselves are going to heaven. I do not see that. Um, I know some people like to use the the part where. Um, Messiah said that he's going to prepare a place for us. Um, but according to the same scripture, it says it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And we're going to be in paradise and his throne supposed to be down here. So I don't know how we supposed to be getting up there. So that's just... Well, when he going to prepare a place, <laughs> why isn't a place like... Listen, if you and me are reasoning and, and, and your mind and my mind, your thought and your my thought and our reasoning can't agree, we're like in different places, even if we're in the same place, right? We could be in the same room, but if our mind states, if we can't come to agreement on something we have in common, right? It's like we're in, we're in a different place. So why, when they say you're going to prepare a place, why do they think of a place always to be a physical place? And why do you think that this, even as this physical place, why must it be in heaven, like in the sky, right? When the Our Father prayer says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth or in earth, right? Now, I want to share this one more thing. And this is not to beat up on the Moors, the Moabites, because Moab is, from an Israelite perspective, is, you know, kind of an in-law. He's not really our brother, but he's like our cousin in a sense. You know what I mean? Right. Um, there's the Holy Quran. When I say Quran, I'm not talking about the Quran. I'm not speaking Arabic. I'm speaking what a lot of our black people over here in America, like the Morris Science Temple of America, they have what's known as the Circle 7 Quran. Right? The Circle 7 Quran. And the Circle 7 Quran is the Quran, right? The Holy Quran of the of the of the of the of the of the Moors. Right, coming from Noble, you know, Drew Ali, so forth and so on. But what it really is, it's the Aquarian gospel. Right? It appears to be the Aquarian gospel and serves God, like if you read their version, where it says God and the Aquarian gospel, they put Allah. But if you read everything else, it's almost like word for word, you know what I mean? Word for word related. I point that out because this particular document called the Aquarian Gospel has been kind of um selected a large portion of it has been selected for what's known as the holy quran of the morris science temple of america right and it says divinely prepared by the prophet the noble prophet drew ali notice the language this is the cover i'm showing them one's the cover of the book it says divinely prepared by the noble prophet notice they didn't say written right they didn't say you know drew ali so when you read it you can basically see that they found this to be inspiring for that movement that basically in our research, my research, it came out of the black Jews, right? The black Jews community here in the Americas, you know, it said that um, Noble Drew Ali, you know, Timothy, Timothy Drew was was, I guess, his government name right before his you say his new name. And he was called to be, you know, the prophet of that particular movement. He attended the. Um, the Moorish Zionist right, uh, temple of Moorish Jews. It is said that him and his family attended that. And some people say when you hear the word um, Zionist, it sounds like scientist. Could they use that Moorish Z science and Moorish scientist? You know what I'm saying? I was going to point out just some of the context and the facts right here. And they are all about, they identify like with Asia. This is what we hear certain black people, Nation of Islam, also speak about the Asiatic black man. I know you've heard that phrase before, right? The Asiatic black man, right? The black man of Asia. Basically, what we're talking about is Buddha, right? 
Kabuta, if Asia is that region of the world, we get the idea from modern times that the Asians look like what we see in like the Chinese, the Kung Fu movies today. But we now get to see archaeology even as far as China. And that was brought out by Brother Kwame too, that the, that the Chinese have been doing the sequencing of their genome. And they see that they keep it as a secret, but it's known that they are from Africa. They see the black connection. That might be a, a, a reason why so many of them are in, in, in Africa today. You know what I'm saying? So it might not just be the reason that they wanted to steal the resources for their global designs, but of the people, you know what I mean? There are other people who basically are like coming back home. I don't know if you always know what I'm saying. You know, they're coming back home in a sense. I'm not, I'm not agreeing with it. I'm just trying to just point it out, you know, as a particular fact. Now, I'm also showing this Waspy Bible, Waspy Bible, because we're going to like address these kind of alternative you know, um, points of views or spirituality, but as brother mentioned with, um, brother Vaughn Benjamin, right. Um, what he says, how do you say to empathize? What, 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 what did the brother say that you recall? He says, um, how to identify, empathize. What was the wording again? Now we empathize. We don't sympathize. It's, it's two different things. When you empathize, you you put yourself in the shoes of another person. Mm. So if I if I have if, if you come to me with a situation, right? In order for me to overcome the situation you are in, in order to help you, I have to have empathy enough for you that I could put myself in that situation that you are bringing to me to know how that would make me. We are how I would feel everything. So now I have just became you. Mm. Check, 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 check. All so right. How, you see, so that's how you become every man or become every woman because as a man, you could become that woman. So if you're in a relationship with a, you know, with your like female and she tell you that something that you did offend her or made her feel a certain way, you have to empathize now and put yourself in her shoes as a female to see how you was wrong. If you can't do that, mm. you're not really having empathy with her situation. Mm. So if you could have that type of empathy, you would check yourself in certain things that you do because now you, we, we start over as like the, um, like the ambassador in meeting said with the Ubuntu, with the oneness that we all are connected into one. So once we realize that whatever happened to you, if I could put myself in that situation, that means it happened to me because now I I I kind of feel what you felt because I put myself in that situation. And I might I don't mm. feel it a hundred percent what you feel. But mm. because I put myself in that situation and make myself that person for that particular point in time. Mm. Mm. I have to become that person and I see what I have done to that person. Well, you just showed me something right there. You showed me, like, remember we went, I think, went over it before the woman that was caught, according to the New Testament gospel, the woman that was caught in adultery. You remember the woman that was yes. caught in adultery? Even though adultery is an act for two. Notice they only brought the woman yes. forward. But oh, it seems exactly. like though he, he, he wasn't saying that that, that, that she was right completely and, and she was without any fault. But they were accusing somebody of adultery, and adultery is a kind of a, a crime for at least two people. If it's a you know if it's a crime, then you can't just bring one person. You know it's a game that two has to play. Like a, one person can't commit adultery by themselves. But if you read that narrative, you can see where and much of the gospels. What you're saying, because it might sound strange to people, they say, "Oh, how's this brother saying?" You know, empathize, that if, like if a woman feel a certain way or vibe, a certain vibe, how can the man put himself in the woman's position? But then if you say Yeshua, right, and like the king of kings from this true trod and tradition, right, and spirituality, you have to recognize that's what the, the, the Jesus did. In more than one occasion, in more than one occasion, he is taking the side of the woman in a point, like, for example, the woman caught in adultery, they just brought one person. And he said, didn't Moses say in his law, blah, 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 blah. But, but in the law, if you read what it was quoting, 
what these teachers of the Jewish religion were like the pastor and the preacher of the Christian thing today. If you read there, it says the man and the woman. In other words, you know, adultery, but they only brought the woman, right? And so he starts writing on the ground and everything, right? And then he says, one without sin cast the first stone. And the Bible says it caught them in their conscience. I think it's John chapter 8. It caught them in their conscience. And one by one, they started, like I was asking my, my wife, I said, what do you think he was writing? A lot of people have been debating, what do you think Yeshua was writing on the ground? I said, maybe he was writing their names. Think about it. Isn't there a verse in the Bible, the scripts that says, and their names shall be written in the earth? You know what I mean? Imagine you writing a person's name on the ground. It's almost like this is your spot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and this is your spot right here. <laughs> you know? And so the ones that were accusing, right? Because he wouldn't bite the bait. They ran off. And then he turned, he lifted up himself and he turned to the woman. He said, where are your accusers? And he says, I'm not going to accuse you either. But he told her to go forward and to sin no more. Check. Yes, that means yes, he sir. knew that she was doing something, but they were hypocrites. They were hypocrites because, yeah, she probably was was doing something. But you can't just accuse one person of a crime like adultery. Like You can't accuse one person of conspiracy. Because conspiracy means at least two or more spirits, thoughts, vibes have to be working in company together. That's what conspiracy means. You know, just you one person and you're a one person conspiracy. <laughs> you know, you are adulterer. It's, usually, it's just you that committed adultery. Just by yourself. You was committing adultery with yourself. But at the end of it all, he told her, he said, I'm not going to accuse you. I, I, and I don't accuse you either. Right? He says, go and what? Sin no more. You know what I'm saying? Even there, he was, he was, he identified with the woman in the situation and with the righteousness, right, of of the fact that they were unrighteous in bringing a charge of adultery against this woman, that they were basically being ancient misogynists. But then he also turned to the woman now on the divine level and say, like, listen, you know you, you what you be doing. Like, you know, you better watch it. Like, I might not be here right in the moment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you get caught up again, <laughs> you know what I mean? And they bring it to another rabbi, I might not be here. Right, you know what I mean, to get you off on this charge. So you better you get on the jail free card. Exactly. But I love that people miss that part. They always say, You see how he didn't accuse the woman? And if you hear some preachers preach that today, it's almost like encouraging people, you know, in in in, in um you could say in, in morality, you know, in unrighteousness, you know what I mean? You know, things that can lead to confusion, death and mayhem. You know what I mean? In the community. But I'd like to show you this right here, uh, if I can, bro. Um, yes, sir. I'm going to go to Aquarian Gospel, right? And I have a PDF. One's going to see the PDF. I have a hard copy, but even the hard copy, I won't be able to show you like this as we record it. So I'm going to look up Buddha. I think it's Buddha. I'm going to look up Buddha in the Aquarian Gospel. Right? So now we're at chapter 11. I like to share with the eye of them who have tuned into this uh, vlog here on the Yeshua and Buddha connection, according to the Aquarian Gospel. And though this is not, you know, say like Bible, remember what Yeshua said, what Jesus Christ right said. He said that he will send scribes, right, and prophets. Let me bring that up for the people before I go into this so that ones and ones can know that we're seeking to reason, not just off of just, just our head top, but based on what is written and put it together and see if this makes sense, right? So there's the scribes. Let's go right here. Scribes, right? I'm just typing this in. Scribes and, and, and he says, I'll send scribes and prophets, right? Prophets, right? Let me put prophets right here. Prophets. Right. So we have five verses and it is in it's found in um, was it Matthew, 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 chapter 23, verse 34, red letter, red letter. So for all the believers, this is Jesus that you might call Jesus more, more properly, Yeshua saying, wherefore, behold, I send to you. My prophets and wise men and scribes. So he sends these three kinds, Trinity, three kinds, prophets, 
wise men, right? And scribes. Now, a scribe obviously writes something, right? And some of them y'all shall kill and crucify. And some of them shall y'all scourge in your synagogues, to say like the old Jewish churches, and persecute them from city to city, right? Let's go over here, from city to city, right? And he says that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. Wow, that's a lot of blood, right? He didn't say since, since Israel or since Abraham was chosen, but he's saying all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of the righteous Abel, that goes way before Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and, and, and Moses and the tribes and Mount Sinai, right? And it says, uh, to the blood of Zach Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom you all slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say to you, all these things shall come upon this generation. So we're going back to this particular verse right here where Yeshua says that he's going to send. So I think, well, not even I think, but it's been revealed to I, right? And I'm, medit I'm meditating on this, right? That some of these works that have been written, even though they don't have the first authority of the ancient scriptures, they are in the spirit of the ancient scriptures. And that other things will be revealed to us even after the ancient scriptures. This doesn't mean that these other revelations, they, they obliterate or wipe out the ancient scriptures. But if they are true, they will help to illuminate. So when we look back in the Bible after really checking the, the Aquarian gospel, if it's true, you'll be able to see clearer, right? Through all the 400 year spiritual, psychological, religious manipulation, you know what I mean? Of the times of the Gentiles. So I just want to put that verse right there, Matthew chapter 34, I mean, Matthew chapter 23, verse 34, Matthew chapter 23, verse 34, where Yeshua says he's going to send. So what do you think? When is he going to send it? Any time after that. That means even today he might send prophets. Like when we say, say Bob Marley is, is, is a prophet, just for example, and some of the Rasta, our Rastafari prophets, people might say, oh, no, no, no. The only prophets are the ones in the, in, in the, like, you know, in the Old Testament. All the prophets ended at John. Now, all the prophets of the Yehudi, the Judaic dispensation to seal up that which pertaineth to Messiah, Yeshua, stopped at, at John. You see what I'm saying? But then the Messiah now says, the one that all the prophecies were pointed to, you know what I'm saying? He is saying, you know, I would say the majority, the, the prophecies concerning the Messiah, right? In the first advent, he is saying he's going to send prophets, wise men, and scribes. So when we say like Marcus, Messiah, Garvey, vis-a-vis -vis the Rastafari revelation is a type of John the Baptist and the prophet, it's not taken away from John the Baptist in his time. You know what I'm saying? But it's saying that for this continual revelation to fulfillment, now I'm going to pause on that right there and I'm going to go right into this right here because I like to share this on Buddha. This is chapter 11 of the, um, of the Aquarian gospel of Jesus Christ. And here it has Elihu's lesson, Buddhism and the precepts of Buddha, the mysteries of Egypt is all in this chapter here. Again, Elihu taught, he said, the Indian priests became corrupt. Brahm, Brahm, like Brahma, but spelled B-R-A-H-M, Brahm was forgotten in the streets. The rights of men were trampled in the dust. A little footnote here. Some people link Abraham or Abram, you know, like Abram. You remember Abraham's first name? Like the first name that he's called, he's called Abram. And then later on in the Torah in Genesis, his name gets to be changed to Abraham. So some link Brahm, like Brahma, Brahm, with Abra, Abram, Abram. Just want to point that out. Second verse, and then a mighty master came. So here this, this one, Elihu is testifying, and Elihu taught that the Indian priests became corrupt. Brahm was forgotten in the streets. The rights of men were trampled in the dust. Then a mighty master came, a Buddha of enlightenment, 
who turned away from wealth and all the honors of the world and found the silence in the quiet groves and caves. And he was blessed. He preached a gospel and gospel means a good news of a higher life and taught man how to honor man. He had no doctrine of the gods of the like Elohim to teach. He just knew man. And so his creed was justice, love, and righteousness. I quote for you a few of many of the helpful words which Buddha spoke. Hate is a cruel word. If men hate you, regard it not. And you can turn the hate of men to love and mercy and goodwill. And mercy is as large as all the heavens. And there is good enough for all. With good, destroy the bad. With generous deeds, make avarice a shame, like greed a shame. With truth, make straight the crooked lines that error draws. For error is but truth distorted, gone astray. And pain will follow him who speaks or acts with evil thoughts, right? With evil thoughts, as does the wheel, the foot of him who draws the cart. He is a greater man who conquers self than he who kills a thousand men in war. Let me just read that again. He is a greater man who conquers self than he who kills a thousand men in war. He is the noble man who is himself what he believes that other men should be. Return to him who does you wrong. Return to him who does you wrong your purest love and he will cease from doing wrong for love will purify the heart of him who is beloved as truly as it purifies the heart of him who loves. The words of Buddha are recorded in the Indian sacred books. Attend to them for they are part of the instructions of the holy breath. The land of Egypt is the land of secret things. The mystery of the ages lie locked bound in our temples and our shrines. The masters of all times and climes come here to learn. And when your sons have grown to manhood, they will finish all their studies in Egyptian schools. But I have said enough. Tomorrow at the rising of the sun, we meet again. Now. Just to share this right here, just a context of this, this points out how, like, it connects with Abraham, how Yeshua is said. You remember how you talking about those missing years after he went to the temple with his family, with his mother, and with his father, or some of us will say his stepfather, right? Yeah, when he was 12 years old. Yeah. And then you say, and it's facts, according to the, 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 the four Gospels, there's nothing else until he's 30. And when it's talking about when he comes to 30, it's talking about how he grew in wisdom. So there's the ancient belief and even some evidence that many have pointed to that we've seen that backs up this idea that Yeshua traveled, that he traveled during these years. You know, like first he began off, you know, with his faith, you could say the Yehudi, the Jewish, Judaic faith, where we find him in the temple at 12 years, one year before his bar mitzvah. But then for the next, how many years until he's 30? How many years is that? That's 30. Like how many years is that before he's 30? That's 20, what, 20, um, that's 20, years. what, 23 years? 18 years. What, is it 18 years? The 18 and 12 is, is 40, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right. My math, thank you, thank you. Iron sharp and iron, yeah. Yeah, 18, 18, 19, 20, you know, and then and then the other 10, yeah, 30. So 18 years. Now, some people say, well, how could this happen? Because how did he get to India? I heard one 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 guy say that, like, how he how could he get to India? You know what I mean? You know, like, like what? See, we're thinking that the people they, they just sat down in one part of the world. You know what I mean? Like they had to get a passport. 
They didn't have to use no passports, right? They didn't have to use no passport. Now, here I want to show something over here. Now, Yeshua, that was in chapter, that was in chapter 11, right? And I think Elihu was one of Yeshua's teachers, you know, so so this kind of puts into context what happened in those missing years. And we already know from the Gnostics, some of the Gnostics like the Pistis Sophia and other works, that there is much that was known to the early Christians or the early Nazarenes, more correctly, you know, and the Essenes, you know, that was also kind of some of it, some of it was maintained like in places like Ethiopia, the Coptic church and the Armenian church, the Syrian church, the Indian, we know there's the Indian church as well. Now here when we get all the way to chapter, chapter, I like to just share this right here with the eye. And here it says Yeshua was in India, right? In chapter 31 of the Quarian gospel, it points out Yeshua was in India, right? And here it brings out that the Brahmic priests, right, are enraged because of Yeshua's teaching. And they resolve to drive him from India, right? That the Brahmic priests, right, were enraged. And that one named Lamas pleads for him. So he had a brethren over there, like an Indian brethren over here, who was like one of his, as his man said, one of the mystics, like in the mystics tribe, right, who was pleading for him. But the priests, they employ they, they employ a murderer to kill him. And Lamas warns him and he flees to Nepal. You know Nepal over there in, in what do they call it? Um, Asia Minor. Not Asia Minor. What do they call it? Indonesia. Indonesia. Right? Over in Indonesia. So it says right here, the, work, the words and works of Yeshua cause unrest through all the land. Now that's interesting because how old is the black Buddha? And then we see other Buddhas come along that are less black. So this document says that the Indian priests over time had corrupted the teaching. So it doesn't mean that they always were corrupt. But after time, corruption came in. So could it be that Yeshua, when he reached there, they already had started to water down the image of Buddha and also distort the teaching? So when Yeshua's out there, they're saying he's causing unrest. The common people were his friends, the regular people. They believed in him. They followed him in throngs. The priests and rulers were afraid of him. His very name sent terror to their heart. He preached. What did Yeshua preach according to the Quarian Gospel? He preached the brotherhood of life, the righteousness of equal rights, and taught the uselessness of priests uh-oh and we sacrificial rights huh to put them out of business uh-oh you see what i'm saying yeah you know what i mean and this is what people are talking nowadays when they're talking about how like what what religion and different things that were spiritualities that are called like religions have become right there might be true words in the books but this whole priestly thing this business you know, has corrupted the teaching. You know, he shook the very sand on which the Brahmic system stood. He made the Brahmic idols seem so small and sacrifice so fraught with sin that shrines and wheels of prayer were all forgotten. The priest declared that if this Hebrew boy, uh oh, notice how this thing is not saying this Jewish boy, you know what I'm saying? It's saying this Hebrew boy should tarry longer in the land. A revolution would occur. The common people would arise and kill the priests and tear the temples down. You know the interesting thing I find about the Indians, like modern Indians, that even though the white man, the, the, the British came with Christianity, many of them still kept to their own beliefs. You notice that? Yeah. Even though if you speak to some of them, Many of them kind of likes a lot of things in Yeshua. They like a lot of things in the one they call Jesus or Jesus. But they, they didn't feel the need to convert because it shows that they must have had some prior acquaintance with this very one. That I say the Gnostics, I mean, not Gnostics, the, the Aquarian Gospel is bringing out some truths that we need to consider, right? That the common people, right, would arise and kill the priests, tear the temples down, and so they sent a call abroad, and priests from every province came. Benares was on fire with Brahmic zeal. So Lamas 
from the temple, what's this? Jagannath. Now, I came across that name in our study. There's an actual place, Jagannath, right? Jagannath, who knew the inner life of Yeshua well, was in their midst and heard the ranting of the priest, the Indian priest, the Hindu priest. And he stood forth and said, my brother priest, take heed, be careful what you do. This is a record-making day. The world is looking on. The very life of Brahmic thought is now on trial. If we are reason blind, you hear me, my brother? If we are reason, like blind to reason, if prejudice be king, the ruling intellect, if prejudice be king today, if we resort to beastly force, and dye our hands in blood that may, in the sight of Brahm, be innocent and pure, his vengeance may fall down on us. The very rock on which we stand may burst beneath our feet and our beloved priesthood and our laws and shrines will go into decay. But they would let him speak no more. The wrathful priest rushed up and beat him spit upon him, called him traitor, threw him bleeding to the streets. Then confusion reigned. The priest became a mob. The sight of human blood led on to fiendish acts and called for more. The rulers, fearing war, sought Yeshua and they found him calmly. <laughs> they found him calmly teaching in the marketplace. They urged him to depart that he might save his life, but he refused to go. And then the priest sought cause for his arrest, but he had done no crime. And then false charges were preferred. But when the soldiers went to bring him to the judgment hall, they were afraid because the people stood in his defense. Notice the difference between his own people and man, the common people. He was against all that all that priestly stuff that that was going on falsely. You know what I mean? But the regular people were on his side. The priests were baffled and they resolved to take his life by stealth, sneakily. They found a man who was a murderer by trade and sent him out by night to slay the object of their wrath. Lamas heard about their plotting and their plans and sent a messenger to warn his friend and, just a little more, and Yeshua hastened to depart. By night he left Benares, and with haste he journeyed to the north. And everywhere the farmers, merchants, and sudras helped him on his way. And after many days he reached the mighty Himalayas. And in the city of Kapivastu he abode. The priests of Buddha opened wide their temple doors for him. So, so, so here what's going on right here with Yeshua, right? So when that question came up, I thought the brother was going to say, yeah, check out the Aquarian gospel, right? Because the Aquarian gospel, it makes the most credible, you know what I mean? The most credible um, reason. But now I like when Yeshua is reasoning with them. He, he, he starts to reason with them. And here we're seeing Yeshua coming from what we can call the Hebrew Right or the Torah um, theology, right? Reaching out to other spiritual brothers and brethren, and showing them this is where we agree, but even in their own belief system, this is where you're off. This is where I say a higher revelation of of this, you know, Aquarian gospel. I don't attribute it to, to, to to like just a, you know, just a a, a white man writing a book. If this white man really was the vehicle for this book, I would say he's inspired. Remember what Yeshua said, right? He would turn to the Gentiles. He said he have other sheep, right? That's none of this flock. What flock are we? You know what I mean? You know, we're like ethnic Yisrael. You know, we're, we're his people. We the black Jews. But that means he has other ones, right? Who are not our particular so-called if one want to call it a race, though the black man is the human race, you know, but a different nationality, a different relig rel religiosity. You know what I'm saying? So I want to share this one more point with the eye, if the eye will, my brother. I know I, I just read that, but I'd like to share one more of, of uh, one more chapter right here. Yes, sir. Okay, so this chapter right here, 
right, is, 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 um, yeah, this is a whole section here about, okay, chapter 32, Yeshua and Barata, another brethren, together they read the sacred books. Yeshua takes exception, get this, of everything that Yeshua took exception, let's listen to where Yeshua took exception, exception to the Buddhist doctrine of evolution and reveals the true origin of man. Now we've been taught that who's the guy? Who, who's who's the guy? What, what, what's his name? Um, Darwin. We're taught we're taught that jo Charles Darwin invented evolution, but according to this, the Buddhists had a doctrine already of evolution, and Yeshua took exception to it, and he reveals the true origin of man. And in this chapter, he meets somebody named Vidyapati, who becomes his co-laborer. This is the main part here I want to share. And I, I'm going to say this, brother. I found some books. One day I was coming from an appointment. I think it was like a doctor's appointment. And me and my sister wife, we were just walking. It was a very good day over the summertime. And when we was walking down, you know, one of the blocks leading to our gates, some of the, the, the neighbors, would throw, you know how people put out books? You know, like, like, like they, if, if, somebody, if anybody want to pick it up and, you know, they could not like throw it in the garbage garbage, but like if anybody passing by, you want a book, you want all the books, you can grab it. So I looked at, you know, I have this attraction for books. So I saw these books here and I picked up this book and brother, I have to tell you, bro, this one book here I have on the shelf, just to quote the name, it's called Hindu scriptures. And one day I had it there and I said to myself, it's like, you know, when, when, when you talk to yourself or you're reasoning in the self or the spirit, the higher man, the higher self and the lower self is having this reasoning. And so I think it was the lower self that was saying, why you get this book, man? This Indian book, right? And then the higher self was just quiet. You go to the higher self always is not arguing. The higher self will let the lower self talk for a moment, right? So I'm there watching this, you know, <laughs> and I opened the book and when I opened the book to this section here, the Kata Upanishad, I started to read it and I started to read it. I was like, yo, I, I could see Torah in it. Let me just say that as I was reading it, I was seeing the truth of Torah being expressed through a different cultural paradigm. And I kept the book open on this page until I had to mark this page because I said, that's amazing, right? Now, here, we're having this reasoning about whether was Yeshua, was Jesus, as they would say, but was Yeshua a Buddhist? And I want to share with everybody this chapter here, just this chapter here, just to maybe sum up and we can follow up on it. From the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ, um, also known as the Morris Science Temple Circle 7 Quran, right? It says, among the Buddhist priests was one who saw a lofty wisdom in the words that Yeshua spoke. It was Barata Arabo. That's his name, Barata Arabo. Together, Yeshua and Barata, they read the Jewish Psalms, what we know as the, the Sefer Tehillim, right? And prophets. They read the Vedas, the Avesta, and the wisdom of Gautama, Gautama, Gautama the Buddha, right? Now, isn't this interesting, bro? Isn't that what people are getting to now, in a sense? You know what I mean? They read the Jewish Psalms and the prophets, right? From the Yeshua, from his tribe and tradition, right? And also from Barata's tradition, they read the Vedas, the Avesta, and the wisdom of the Guatama, who's known as the Buddha, right? And they read and talked about the possibilities of man, Right? They were just vibes in? <laughs> just vibes in from high level reasoning. High level. So the Indian man, the Buddha man are reading the, the Sefer Tehillim, the Yehudi, the Jewish Psalms, and the Nabeen, the Naveen, the prophets. And Yeshua from the Yehudi is reading the Vedas of Vesta and Guatama Buddha. Now, here's where the conversation gets interesting. As they read, they talked about the possibilities of man, right? So Barata, his brethren said, man is the marvel of the universe. He is a part of everything for he has been a living thing on every plane of life. Time was when man was not. 
He says, time was when man was not. And then he was a bit of formless substance in the molds of time. And then a protoplast. By universal law, all things tend upward to a state of perfectness. The protoplast evolved, becoming worm, then reptile, bird, and beast. And then at last it reached the form of man. Now man himself, Bharata is saying, is mine. Now man himself is mine and mine is here to gain perfection by experience. And mine is often manifest in fleshy form and in the form best suited to its growth. So mind, this is what Bharata is saying. So mind may manifest as worm or bird or beast or man. The time will come when everything of life will be evolved to the state of perfect man. And after man is man in perfectness, he will evolve to higher forms of life, right? Okay. Now, Yeshua said this, right? Barata Rabo, who taught you this? That mind, which is the man, may manifest in flesh of beasts or bird, or creeping thing. Now, let me pause here for everyone who's watching, especially the Rastafari brothers and sisters and those who who misunderstand what his match he said about man is not emanated from a deity. This is the inner of what the King of Kings said when he's saying that, that, that emanation philosophy. Hear what Yeshua said. Yeshua asked Barata Rabo, who gave that wonderful word sound, who taught you this? That man, which is that, that, that mind, that the mind, which is the man, may manifest in flesh of beast or bird or creeping thing. Barata said, here's what Barata said. From times which man remembers not, our priests have told us so. And so we know. Yeshua said, enlighten Arabo. Are you a master mind and do not know that man knows not? By being told? Question mark. Now let's just, re just pause on this. He says, enlighten Arabo. You, are you a mastermind? Like a great teacher? And, and, and do not know that man knows not. Man knows nothing by being told. Man may believe, believe, credit, trust what others say. But thus, like this, he never knows. If man would know, he must himself be what he knows. Do you remember, Arabo, when you was ape or bird or worm? Now, if you have no better proving of your plea than that the priest <laughs> have told you so, you do not know. You simply guess. Regard not then what any man has said. Let us forget the flesh and go with mind into the land of fleshless things. Mind never does forget. And backward through the ages, master minds can trace themselves. And thus they know. Just a pause on this. He says, and backward through the ages, masterminds can trace themselves. And thus, like this, they know time never was when man was not. Uh oh, uh oh. Yeshua is saying here in the Aquarian Gospel that time never was when man was not. That which begins will have an end. If man was not, the time will come when he will not exist. Oh, woo. here it is. Now, here's where he's going to go up even more. From God or from Elohim's own record book, we read, the triune God, the triune Elohim breathed forth and seven spirits, seven spirits stood before his face. Then it has a parenthesis here. It says the Hebrews call these seven spirits Elohim. You hear me, brother? Call these seven spirits Elohim. And they, and these are they who in their boundless power created everything that is or was. These spirits, 
the Elohim, right? Of the triune God, right? You know, the Selassie, the Selassie Amlak, right? They moved on the face of boundless space and seven ethers were. And every ether had its form of life. These forms of life were clothed, were, 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 where, where am I? These forms of life were but the thoughts of Elohim or God, clothed in the substance of their ether planes. Men call these planes the planes of protoplast, of earth, of plant. Of beast, of man, of angel, and of cherubim. These planes, with all their teeming thoughts of Elohim, of God, are never seen by eyes of man in flesh. They are composed of substance far too fine for, coarsey, for fleshy eyes to see. And still they constitute the soul of things. And with the eyes of soul, all creatures see these ether planes and all the forms of life. Because all forms of life on every plane are thoughts of Elohim. All creatures think and every creature is possessed of will and in its measure has power to choose. Wow, bro. You remember I was reasoning about this? about the will how how the what Yeshua is breaking down here because all forms of life on every plane are thoughts of Elohim all creatures all creation think and every creature is possessed of will and in its measure has the power to choose and in their native planes all creatures are supplied with nourishment from the ethers of their planes and so it was with every living thing until the will, until the will, until the will became a sluggish, a sluggish will. And then the ethers of the protoplast, the earth, the plant, the beast, the man began to vibrate very slow. The ethers all became more dense and all the creatures of these planes were clothed with coarser garbs, the garbs of flesh, which men can see. And thus, like this, this coarser manifest, which men call physical, appeared. And this is what is called the fall of man. But man, Adam, right? Man fell not alone. For protoplasts, the earth, and plant, and beasts were all included in the fall. The angels and the cherubim fell not. Their wills were ever strong. And so they held the ethers of their planes in harmony with Elohim. Now when the ethers reached the rate of atmosphere and all the creatures of these planes must get their food, from atmosphere, the conflict came, and then that which is which the finite man has called survival of the best became law. The so-called survival of the fittest became law. The stronger ate the bodies of the weaker manifest. And here is where the carnal law of evolution had its rise. And now man in his utter shamelessness, strikes down and eats the beast. The beast consume the plant. The plant thrives on the earth. The earth absorbs the protoplast. In yonder kingdom of the soul, this carnal evolution is not known. And the great work of master minds is to restore the heritage of man to bring him back to his estate that he has lost when he again will live upon the ethers of his native plane. The thoughts of Elohim change not. The manifest of life on every plane unfold into perfection of their kind. And as the thoughts of Elohim can never die, there is no death to any being of the seven ethers of the seven spirits of the triune God.
the Trinity, God. And so an earth is never planned. A beast or bird or creeping thing is never man. And man is not and cannot be a beast or bird or creeping thing. The time will come when all these seven manifests will be absorbed. And man and beast and plant and earth and protoplast will be redeemed. Barata was amazed. The wisdom of the Yehudi, the Jewish, this black Jewish sage was revelation to him. Now, Vidyapati, the wisest of the Indian sages, chief of the temple of Kapavistu, heard Bharata speak to Yeshua of the origin of man and heard the answer of the Hebrew prophet. And he said, you priests of Kapavistu, hear me speak. We stand today upon a crest of time. Six times ago, a master soul was born who gave a glory light to man. And now a master sage stands here in Temple Kappa Vistu. This Hebrew prophet is the rising star of wisdom, deified. He brings to us a knowledge of the secret things of Elohim, of God, and all the world will hear his words, will heed his words and glorify his name. You priests of temple Kapavistu, stay, be still and listen when he speaks. He is the living oracle of Elohim. Last verse here in this chapter and all the priests gave thanks and praised the Buddha of enlightenment. So the Buddha, you know that Buddha comes from Bodhi. Bodhi, according to the translation, means like knowledge. And the Buddha is one who seeks and gains knowledge. So here, after hearing Yeshua, all the priests gave thanks and praised the Buddha of enlightenment. He was the manifestation of that living knowledge, like in the flesh. So, was Yeshua a Buddha? No, he was the Buddha. Yeshua wasn't a Buddhist. <laughs> you know, he's the Buddha. He's the Buddha. I got, I'm going to send the eye of this right here, the PDF. This is chapter 32. This is my favorite chapter here. Because Yeshua didn't dismiss he didn't dismiss evolution as a word. It is, how do you define this evolution you talk about? You know what I'm saying? That the evolution was really the fall of man. Because notice those seven, those seven ethers. Man is, is the, the height of all the ethers below him fell. You know what I mean? The protoplast, you know, the plant, you know, um, the earth, you know, um, the beast. They all fell because all that was under him, but but the, that which was above him, the angels and the cherubim, their will was stronger. I love how they explain the connection of Elohim. You know, you know when we talk about the spirit, you remember that reason that we still to have the one about um, what is it? The spirit, um, not the form of the spirit. What? How, how did I title it? The spirit. Um, I have it in my notes. Hopefully, I have it in my notes right here. We was having a reason that. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was the spirit and its many forms. Oh yeah, the spirit and its many forms. How he breaks down the Elohim, and say that the Elohim represents those, um, you know, those are uh, the seven spirits, right, of the triune God. That's another interesting thing there too. You know what I mean? Because I'm 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 finding out that, you know, the Trinity. I got proof of it too was known to many of the real rabbis before Yeshua, the real rabbis before the time of Yeshua, they all spoke of the of the true Hebrew God as being a triune God. You know what I mean? They, they understood the relationship of like the father and son and that Holy Spirit aspect. And they found this from studying the Torah and the prophets. You know what I'm saying? Because it seems strange when Yeshua just all of a sudden is talking about and baptizing the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? It sounds to people like he's making up something because we don't, you know, understand the previous tradition. You know, you know, because between Malachi and Matthew is is the apocryphal books. 
and the apocryphal books cover 400 years. You know what I'm saying? So what ideas were percolating? You know, like we say, we Rastafari. We know that Rastafari manifestation, though we say that it's the eternal truth, but we know there's a kind of a chronology to its manifestation. But it's based on tried and tradition and experience of Ja people leading up, you know what I mean, to that full declaration. It didn't just come out, you know, it didn't just fall out of heaven. So what Yeshua was saying, he wasn't just making up stuff like people make believe. You know, and those those Jews who say, you know, there ain't no Trinity and certain things that contradict Yeshua, the rabbi of rabbis. Well, that's why Revelation says what it says, you know, without going into further details right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But definitely got to share this chapter with the eye. I, I, I wanted to share that chapter with the eye from before when we was talking about some reasonments, because when I think about expressing the truth, about some levels of reasonment, it reminds me of some things I've read in the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ, as it's called in translation. And, um, you know, being somebody that was like, you know, like on a, on a pro-black, you know what I mean? That sometimes we could be so pro-black that we have to remember what the Naya Bingi says, like it says, death to black and white down presser. So it has to be about righteousness, right? And therefore, if we know that there's some black devils right there might be some whites that have been called to be messengers or quote angels in that sense to reveal something you know what i mean because they could get it out there imagine if a black man had this you know what i'm saying back in them yeah, days you never know. i mean like the, uh, the world sort of most high is mystic you know so you never know who the messenger is you know you gotta check the so, message yeah so that's when you gotta pay attention to the message because if me and you don't get along, right? Say we are neighbors and we don't get along. And we've been living to, by each other for 15 years. So, you know, by this point, we really can't stand each other. And you went to the store. And I see you walk to the store and your house starts a fire. And I run to the store and tell you, yo, your house on fire. Mm. Because we haven't spoken to each other in over 10 years. You like you gonna ignore me that your house on fire? <laughs> I ain't speaking to you, man. Don't talk to me, man. Your house on fire. Don't talk to me, man. I, I'm not listening to you. I, we don't get out of my face. Your house on fire. <laughs> That'll be madness. That'll be madness. You're... You know. So although you probably ain't gonna speak to me again after tomorrow, but No, 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 no. I'll message. talk. I'll talk. I'll talk, bro. Because you, know, you, you, you received the message. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll talk. I, I I'll be asking yo why why were, why were we not talking? Let, let's forget that. Let's let's start a new, turn over a new leaf. You know what I mean? <laughs> Especially if I can save my house. Hopefully you tell me why I can still save my house. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> I can still bring some water and save somebody. You know, maybe save somebody if not save the house. I can save you know somebody if they're in the house. You know what I mean? Definitely. And that's what this message is about. You know, and most people need to understand that a lot of messages that you should really pay attention to sometimes come from sources you don't too much really care for, you know? <laughs> but. Mm, what well, a great way to put it. A great way to put it. And that's an excellent way. That explains why His Majesty, remember His Majesty, Kadamah Hala Selassie, when conquering line the tribe of Judah, you know, um, when he was in um, India. And, and 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 dealing with some of um, um, the mystics and others. You remember that one that in the speech that kind and not controversial, but there's parts of the speech where His Majesty actually quotes that Radha Christian. I think the Radha Christian, Radha, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, and he gave that Radha Christian, you know, certain um, certain like um, like I think he got got a degree, an honorary degree or something like that from Hollis Lassie University, and how His Majesty. Um, shared, you know, this mystic kind of bond, even though the, the, the Indian man, he's of his tradition and his majesty, you know, rep it, you know, that Judeo-Coptic, you know, one can call it the Judeo-Christian in the righteous sense tradition, how they were saying the same thing. You know what I mean? That reminds me of what we're hearing here with the testimony of Yeshua in India. You know what I mean? And the testimony of Yeshua among the Buddhists and the testimony of the Buddhists that Yeshua 
was not just a Buddhist. You see? So that's why I'll say it was in that sense. He was, you know what I mean? The Buddha. You know what I mean? The Buddha. Because he's revealing the same truth. You know what I mean? And he would be actually, the beauty about the, about the Aquarian gospel, it kind of shows that connection with a lot of the ancient traditions. You know what I mean? And, and when, when I see in his majesty, I think we need, especially as Rastafari, need to have, you know, some reasonments on this and to see the practical application of this. You know, like one's, one's spirituality is, is, it can be a personal thing in the in in that real intimate sense you know what i mean but there's a practical application because what yeshua was talking about is the corruption like men and people are the same the jewish the black jewish priests were corrupt got corrupt you know what i mean just as we say that some of the reggae music has become corrupt i mean wouldn't we say that that reggae music some of the music today has become corrupt we corrupt but yet if somebody heard us say, man, I don't check for not reggae, it's corrupt. Like, you know, some of our Bingy and, 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 and Bobo Man say them things. But then a lot of them would like the old roots. But somebody who doesn't understand think that they're throwing out the baby in the bathwater. You know what I mean? And so discernment is important to say that there was a time when these teachings, right? The teachings were never corrupt, but sometimes men and people, like you said, the priests. Notice it was the priests in India, some of the priests, not all of them, because remember he, he went from there and then he went to another, went up north and another another Buddhist temple opened up for him. You know what I mean? <laughs> but in this other Buddhist temple that he was in, <laughs> you know. Always, it, it, like in the teaching, sometimes is a, is, a, is a complaining instead of a teaching. Like you just use reggae music as an example, that they will put a blanket and say, oh, reggae music is corrupt or reggae music is this nowadays, right? Instead of um, pointing out that most of the reggae music you would, that you would want to listen to is not getting the airplay that it should, mm, and, and point, point out the artist them that is actually singing these positive music out there, so people could search out these 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 artists for themselves and get this message. But if you're just going to blanketly say that you know that you know the whole thing is corrupt. You're not giving people an outlet to, you know, to look to see who is out there actually doing the work, you know. So for the artists that who are doing the work to, you know, to keep this positive message and keep this, you know, this vibes going of, of righteousness amongst the, you know, the people them out here doing this work. You're not doing them any service by putting a blanket on this and that's putting mm -hmm. a spotlight on these artists who, who are out here doing the work. No. They deserve that spotlight. No, no, that's a point. That's a point. And I have to mention I and I, brother, um, Vaughn Benjamin, I.K. Becker, a.k.a. Midnight. You know what I mean? Um, just as one example. I mean, I think one of the major examples. You yeah, know what I mean? Another example out there. I'd like to give my girl Rima a shout out, you know? Mm, mm, you know, mm. You know, I want you to check out Rima. How, how, you know? how, how she spell her name for the audience to look up? How she spell her name? R W E. H A M H M A. Hold on for a moment. Let's see. R R W E M A H. Okay. R double E. You say uh, uh, H is in there? If you recall. Yeah. I mean, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll just look her up just so that ones and ones because you know you mentioned her before, and I don't think I have gotten any of her music up there like for the podcast or whatnot. But it's definitely. Would like to, you know, give more and thank you for yeah. for all the. Yeah, R, yeah. R W E M E H. Yeah, of course. Okay, okay. Hold on for a moment for for the audience right here. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Speak on her. Speak on her. Speak on her for for a moment, just yeah, so she's that. Yeah, one of our uh, VA, you know, the reggae queens out of Saint Croix. Uh, very very versatile, you know, in her skills as a musician. You know, sings very well, chants. You know, she gives you the whole, you know, nine. And okay. Her, you know, and her knowledge is 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 is, is, is impeccable. You know, so you know she's on a very conscious Rastafari she looks mission. She looks familiar. She looks so, nice. You know, to enlighten and 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 and, mm. and 
bring the people to a state of of of, of, of continuous consciousness, you know. Wow, so I'm this looking. Is the kind of music that she presents out there. I'm looking at a picture of her right here, and I'm just looking at her face. She looked for me. It's like, I know. It's like, it's like. You know when you see someone and it's like I know this person. You know what I mean? It, it, it's the vibes. You know, it's it's the vibes. You know, but I have her on the screen. We had looked her up, and yeah, the eye is correct with like she born Saint Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands, Rima. She got to an ever bless, give thanks every day, crowns up on your head. Wow, what? She's been she's been doing work, pushing work. I see you going back to um. Oh yeah, she been she sees it. She's been in the business a few years well. She been she sees it. She wow. Sees it. Okay, okay. Definitely I have to build up because um we need more of the of the daughters, you know, the daughters of Zion, you know, the daughters of Jerusalem. You know, I know, you know, like once and once know about, you know, Rima. I mean I mean um like um like Desiree as well, you know. You know, um like Mother Nile. You know, so you know, a shout out to a couple of the VI queens, you know. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe one day we just have to just do a just vibes and like on like some musicality, even though sometimes playing some music in our videos we have to kind of watch it and avoid it, but we can at least reason, you know, on the good music, the the, the artists, you know what I mean, just to. Yeah. Help, help to you know keep the message, the the the, the good news alive because they, like you said, they don't get a lot of there's many ones that don't get in the radio. Well, see, airplane. We have to, like some of these artists, right? That we call artists, right? Um, starting with you know, with you know, with the King Akibeka himself. We have to stop looking at their stuff so much as music. Mm. It's it, it, you know, it comes to you in a musical form, yes. But these are messages that we need to really pay attention to and 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 treat it like a message that came to you instead of just a song. Mm. Facts, facts. Good you point. Know, so when you listen to the lyrics of these artists, Rima is the same way. You know, when you listen to Rima, you like you go to over what I'm talking about. It, you know, mm. our intellect is, is very, very high. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at her. Uh, what we are looking at, like right here, j j we put it on, like, type the name in, went to the Google, kind of like the search, hitch up, and then we just look at the pictures, like some pictures, her albums, you know, how she's presenting herself, but the message, so it's a whole, good news, it's the gospel, what we, what we call, for lack of a better word, the gospel, which means the good it. news, it's the, it's the good news, I, I would say I won't, this, I see an album, well, I won't, <laughs> this is Rima Mixtape. All right, all right, my brother. Thank you. I know you mentioned her before, and I don't know if I got a chance to even do what I'm doing now in the full of fullness, just seeing the work that has been put out. You know, the work that has... Well, she does, does seem familiar. She, she seems like, like I must have like been walking down the street or something, you know what I mean? And yes. like heal up, you know, like, yes, sister, you know what I mean? You know, like, you, you know, you look eye to eye. You know, you see someone, you look eye to eye, and now you see them elsewhere and say, wait, I, I, didn't I meet this person? I, I met, yeah, you know, but the spirit, it's, it's spiritual family. It's message. It's message music. It's not just, you know, so-called. Exactly. So we talk about prophets, right? Prophetess. Yeah, <laughs> gotcha. Exactly. Yeah, but they hear the spread messages, you know? Mm. So... You got some, some people take music in order to, um, to tell a story about something to do with their life or what they see or they are bringing or whatever. You know, and some people make music to make you shake your body and, you know, some people make music just for money. But then there's these special people who, you know, that, you know, that, you know, the Bible speak of, you know, the sing, you know, the players of the instruments, you know, and the singers of music, you know, you speak about these people in the Bible. Wow. These, these people, you can see them throughout the ages, who they are. They, you know, they set apart. If you just watch their vibes and the, the content of their music, you will see that these are the special ones that are sent with these messages for us that we should not look as music so much, but as a special message that they are coming to do with us. 
it's not everybody doing what they're doing. Mm, true, true, true. You yeah, know, yeah. I'm looking at one of our album covers in Mind's Eye of the, the Midnight. There's a ream, I think, Check Your Words. She has yes. this album cover, and the album cover is like a, a very, um, I don't want to say midnight ish, but it's like uh, uh, Kay Becca, like, and, and, and Ross, Hail Up Ross and Elijah Tafari, who who's done many, many of the album covers of the artists known as uh, Midnight, well, as he's known, but R.K. Becker and Vaughn Benjamin. You know, I'm, I'm just looking at her, the album covers, that inspiration, that seems to be, uh, um, can can we say, uh, well, St. Croix, a St. Croix thing? <laughs> yes, sir. You know, a St. Saint... Croix roots reggae, you know, when, you know, them boys down there and, and just to them boys, let me excuse that, you know, the kings and queens down there, you know, <laughs> that hold up the reggae, you know, the roots reggae vibe, you know, hold that one drop, you know, and hold that message of his majesty, you know, and show that reverence and, 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 and discipline that his majesty spoke about, you know, so when they went in the studios and put these musics together, they put these musics together with the reverence of his majesty, you know, to do the works and make sure that their calling wasn't, you know, wasn't missed, you know, so regardless of what happened from here on out, these music's going to be here. And these guys have made and left some very good music for us and still making good music down there. So you all check out the Virgin Islands Roots reggae scene. Mm. Are these some of the artists I have are still right here? Hopefully when I get to check the video, I think I'm going to see to put this straight up there. You know, like overnight for the for the, for the morning, for the dawning crowd. Um, there's yeah. someone named Army the General. Army, you got um Nayura, yeah, Rasbach. Yeah. I call Rasbach the voice. You know, Revelation. You know. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. How about a uh, bus pipe? Bus pipe. Well, you know, like everybody know the big man already. You know, pressure. Bus pressure. Pipe, you know? Jardesta. <laughs> How about Bingy Goes? Cause it, 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 there's this little collage here, and it has Rima in red. Her her name is it's like a little collage. They have Army General, then Pressure, kind of large. And we said, um, what? Right. what, what nor, um, yeah, and, a couple and, of artists busting right now. Mean too much. No, a couple of the boss. You know, a couple ones busting right now. You know that I ain't too much. Really, you know the names of just yet. Um, you know, you check out the Ras Element Records. You know, check out Ras Element Records. You know, yeah, Rastel was, doing, you know, was, Rastel was the, um, the bass player for Aki Becca, mm. you know, so he has his own thing, Rast, you know, so just check out, you know, like Element Records, I think it is, but, you know, like Rastel, and you all know TPI grade, you know, and, you know, and Zion I Kings, you know, doing, you know, works down there as well, you know, so check out these guys. Mm. Well, yo, and, and, and how, how you say her name, N-Y-O-R-A-H? No, Nayura is a guy. Uh, okay, Nayura, Nayura. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Apologies, apologies. Nayura, Nayura. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but it's interesting. But Rima's there in the red. Her 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 thing is in red. Is uh Rebel? What's what's his name? Um. Oh yeah, Re Pressure Bus Pipe. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just looking at some of the some of the the picks. You know, when you put a name in and you scroll down the picks. You know, oh, crown upon your heads. I like that one there where it has the pyramids. Her, her, I think it's the album cover or the singles cover. It has crowns upon your head, and it's a, it's an interesting collage. Like it's a, it's kind of like an interesting collage with the pyramids. You know what I mean? So, you, so you see the culture. The culture is there. You know, in a very kind of like, um, I'll say overt, but also it's a subliminal. So even the, the, the artistry. Not just the artistry of the singer and the song and the delivery, but even the artwork. You know what I mean? The artwork is is mystical. So it's, it's like a multimedia. You know what I'm saying? It's like a multimedia. It's not just a, that one is singing a tune, but the message in the tune and how one is presenting Rastafari. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? It, it's It's very vibrant and... This is why we really have to talk about this more because it's like maybe the media, you know, I remember back in the days when they used to have the pirate. They said they called us pirate, illegal protester. 
just because we play what the people want. That was a protest against the fact that they wasn't playing like the then tunes, you know what I mean, on radio. So ones and ones were finding underground ways, so to speak, you know what I mean, of bringing them music to the people. So the same thing has to be done. I, I, you know, me thinks, you know, with with um, the St. Croix and other areas of, you know, out of other regions where this, where the message is coming from. You know what I mean? But it's not really, it's been... Yeah, I got Brethren back home too, just released an album there. Before I forget to mention him there, um, and one of his songs on the album there is um, a tribute to Akibeka. His name is Ancient King. You know, so he just had an album drop there a little while ago. I think the album drop on um, an Ab- Ab- um, Rasel, um, re- uh, like production, I think it's Element Records, if I'm correct. Mm, mm. His name again, Ross. He- Ancient King. Ancient. Ancient yeah. King. Ancient. Yeah. yeah, Ancient King. Ancient Just dropped King. the album. But I think it's under Ras Element Record. Yeah, I heard about Element. Is it Element? Does he go by Elemental? No, that's. He, um, he was the bass player, like I said. Um, okay, the bass uh, player. Yeah, the, the, the bass player for Akibeka. Oh, man, you know, I'm, I'm but still. He, he actually, um, I think he actually produced one or two of. Um, the albums from Midnight back in the day as well. Oh man, it's like I almost feel like music wise, I'm still in the nineties, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like like it's like so much good music be coming out, gotta catch up. You know what I mean? On the good music, you know what I mean? And the and the roots. Like one of the good things about most of the music that comes out of the Virgin Islands, right? Especially them boys in Saint Croix. Um ain't really no songwriters down there. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. You, you, you mean understand? you mean a singer don't have to go to somebody else to no, write them a tune? No, they don't go to nobody for no song. This is these man song. These <laughs> man write these things and come up with the things they sell. You know, man sitting there writing no song for no man like that. And say, yeah, I want you for sing this and you for no. sing that. <laughs> and little and little it balloon. What the boy's the name again? Um, we got some, we got two fellas from Rock City, from St. Thomas, I forget them by their name, I wish I could remember the name right now. But they're big in America. A lot of the hip-hop tunes you hear, and R&B tunes you hear, that is big hit and win Grammy Awards. Is them boy write them song out of St. Thomas. Mm. I think the name Rock City or something like that they call themselves. Mm. Yeah, I think it's two brothers. Okay. But if I write a whole heap of song for these big artists to see how he's singing rap and R and B and these kind of things here too. So there's a lot of talent come out of the Virgin Islands that people don't really, you know, pay attention to. You know, the place is full of talent. Wow. I just I I, I, I just put in Saint Croix reggae music while the I was reasoning it. And it came up, I saw an album cover that caught my attention. It's like joyful noise various artists and then it's it's themed um deep the deep roots reggae of saint croix the joyful noise of 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 i think various artists yeah 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 you know i, I like to check that out because sound like you know um nazio where, where's nazio from i miss i i see nazio here you know nazio fontaine no nazio fontaine i think i don't know where he's from Okay, okay, okay. No, no, but he just came. Oh, oh, oh! Here's the man. Here's the man. Saint Croix. Yeah, yeah. World saddened by the um, passing of um, Vaughn Benjamin. No, there's a there's one of one of his picks here. Cause I I guess I'm doing this in lieu of when we just focus on the music. Yeah, you know anniversary I mean? <laughs> coming up just now of his passing uh, November fourth. You know, it's, I guess we, we, we met in the spirit, you know what I mean? You know, but it's like, yeah, yeah, no, it's just, ah, like the tunes you be sharing, a few of the tunes that we shared on the podcast, um, you know, like the verses he chose even from the scripts, you know what I mean? It's just, it's electric, you know what I'm saying? And... Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Man set a standard, man. He, you know, 
you know, like I look at it, I, I look at it as you know, like a bookmark in music, you know. Bob Marley on one end, and he and, the, and like the next end, everybody else in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know, a good you know, way. You know, like if anybody get offended, that's you know, that's on you. But <laughs> you know, that's how I look at it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's speaking about the content. We're talking about the content, you know, the content and even the quality of the message, right? The quality of the message. In other words, we're not talking about, you know, um, the Gentile island politics. And that's what's stifling the music in, in some sense, you know, is we getting caught up on the localized politics. That we just listen to the message and we say we're about Rastafari and about the message of the King of Kings. Then I think man and man and woman and woman and people will be able to see and know and catch no offense. You know what I mean? To what the mind say. You know what I'm saying? If one can see it that way. <laughs> man prove man prove something, right? That the the powers that be thought was unprovable. Okay? He got no airplay. His music got stifled worldwide, right? Mm. by the powers that be because mm. of the message that he was spreading right mm. but there is people out there who are hungry for such a message and spiritually they have been looking for such things their whole life mm. so when they come across this person from this small little part of the world and hear this sound for the first time the spirit recognized what they've been looking for. Mm. So now one spread this to a next one and one spread this to a next one. And instead of we getting airplay from the big conglomerate people, them, you get in a word, I'm out cheering here and what I'm out cheering there from a conscious community. Mm. So now you are growing a community. Mm. So what he did was he grew a worldwide community of spiritual conscious people that are looking for a message. Like he said, he didn't come here to teach. He came to wake up dormant. Mm, mm, mm. So message, yeah. when you prove to the world that without the support of this machine, that most people get involved in, in, you know, to push their music or whatever, that he was not part of this machine and this machine was trying to stifle his music in the first place. Mm. That he was one of the most, if not the most toured artists in the world. Mm, mm, mm. So he was always on tour somewhere. So now when he proved that once you sing, the music for the correct reason to the correct people, you are going to be heard. Mm, mm. And not just at home, but abroad. Mm. The question is, are you singing for money or are you singing for his majesty? Mm. That's the question. Mm. Is he singing for money? Wow. And wow. the money ain't coming, you're going to give up. What's the artist name from, I think is, what the artist from, I think he from Guyana, one of them plays there. He used to be a roots reggae singer, Natural Blacks, I think he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Natural Blacks used to be a roots reggae singer and then went to start to sing dance hall and wind up and I do all kind of foolishness because he didn't see the money coming. So that means his, his whole persona that he came into with this Rasta vibe was fake in the first place because as soon as you feel a little pressure, you run and start to go wind up and jump and down the place like a hooligan. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, when yeah. you were saying Rastafari. <laughs> that's why, that's why, that's why. But that's a, that's, See, a, that's interesting. So that is the key. Were you doing this for monetary gain, purposely? Are you doing this to do his majesty's work? But Mali tell you, if money come, money come. But if you do this for the proper reason, Jack gonna take care of you. Mm. Somebody gonna take care of you, you know? Because there's a balance to this thing. You know, you should mind me that I did a video. It was after hearing of the passing. I did a video 
and um, that was on the old channel. But I'm thinking to get that video and to, to re-upload it. And it, it just got a good receptivity. It, it was just a reasoning on the name I.K. Becca. Because ones were asking I about the name I.K. Becca. And I recall the name, like I.K. Becca. But like from, you know, studying the, the Gutters and, and Ethiopic Enoch. But I couldn't really speak on it because, you know, you, you, know, you, you read something and, you, and it resonates. But you have to kind of return to the book. So I just did a reason on that. I just, I, I got to share that one again because, um, yeah, man, the I just bring in all this like full cipher, full circle, you know what I mean? And by going to the research, I began to recognize, yeah, this mind, mind really deep, you know what I mean? Like on next level, like as I went back over, you know, the documents, you know, the book of Enoch, you know, and saw like, okay, this is weird, that name, you know, like the connection. And trying to trying to reason on well, why the mind, you know, choose this? What's the message here? You know what I mean? And that that was just the first part. That was like part one, but we never followed up on it. You know, I didn't feel that informed about the artist because, you know, I've heard different that's, tunes. But that's I, why I sent you that clip that day one time where I found that clip where um, Luton Fire was talking about his his. His, um, mm, his experience mm. with Vaughn mm. and when he gave that testimony of they up reasoning all day and then they went to sleep for a few hours and they were supposed to sleep in the morning but they sleep for a few hours and Vaughn jumped up out in the middle of his sleep and woke them up and said he just got an album not a song an album Jaja just sent an album <laughs> <laughs> He just went to sleep for a few hours ago, not even six hours ago. A few hours you guys sleep, but he's wake up Jada and here. Not a song, no. A album. And, and the man, the man didn't, the man was like, um, um, I know, I remember I hear, I heard like, like on rap and hip hop that Jay Z, he would compose all his things in his head. Like it'd be, so. That every, was Van. Everything Van was, was in his head. Van doing that from Jump. That's something he doing from Jump Street. So he had. I mean, he had the whole album already in his in, in his head top. It already music, already music, there. everything, instrument, beats, the whole nine. Oh wow, oh, wow, wow! The whole album. So 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 when he so when he put together say an album, he already has like the vision, the vision of it is already there. The whole thing. Wow, 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 wow! He, mm -hmm. he is That's telling uh, he is telling the musicians how to play the thing, and he could play every instrument. So if you're not doing it correctly. He will take the instrument from you and show you what he want and give it back to you. Wait, 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 wait. hold on for a moment. See, this is this is almost turning into, but we're still in the Buddhist vibe, right? <laughs> but this is turning into like a Vaughn. Wow, 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 wow. We might have to put somewhere in the title plus a reasonment on Vaughn Benjamin. <laughs> no, but this, no, but all this tie in because it's showing the mystics. It's showing mm. the mystics of the Most High. Truly, truly, truly. Check, it's truly. showing the mystics of the Most High because truly. what the Buddhists them here to do? Ain't to give us a message? Ah, yeah, yeah. So, if the Buddhist is the wise man with the message, are the, you know, uh, are the Buddhists, you know, how we call, you know, the female or what, <laughs> you know, with the message. I, I. You know, you know, you know, you know, the balance is there. Wait, 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 I got to look that up. Is there, what, what is a female Buddha call? <laughs> I'm telling you. So, <laughs> You know, that, they, you know, but they are there with that spiritual message as well, you know, so mm. it's a connection. See, I don't know. It's, it, mm. it's these, the ones that the Most High has sent throughout the ages in different forms, you know, and like we said, the singers and players of instrument, they are mentioned in the good book as well. So, so all these things tie within the spiritual connection of these messages that is here to enlighten and steer the people and the right and righteous pattern to keep us there. Amen. I mean, so the brother, the brother, uh, okay, because every time, like, I either see, like, either, you know, different, different depicts, eye traits, or from shows or sessions, as it be, and as it were, I would, you know, he's always, like, on the mic, but you're saying that the brother, not only being, being the, um, the messenger, also had knowledge of the instrumentality of the music. Yes, sir. Wow. Wow. I mean, I mean that 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 he could, 
instead of just singing or bringing forth the message, he could just play the instrument. He, he had that. Wow, yes. wow, wow, wow. That's talent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I believe, you know, he took a rest for a couple of hours and woke up and had the whole album in, you know, <laughs> in, in, in mind. The, the music, everything. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> So that's why I sent you the clip of Luta and Fire saying that so you could hear somebody else's testimony instead of mine. <laughs> true, true, true. And the one, the, there was the other one just on this. There was the other one, the other testimony was about, who was the artist? Was it Chronics? It, it was, no, not Chronics. It was not Chronics. The other one, the other one. On the one, the Book of Life, Book of Life. Um, I Wayne, I Wayne. It, it, was it I Wayne? It was a touring? And how he was told to kind of like by his manager or damager, he was he was he was told like. We we gonna leave that one alone. Oh okay 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 no 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 okay that that was wrong video that was another that was another. <laughs> that was something else right there. Oh oh station what do you say this is time for station identification, <laughs> you know but 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 right here 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 just on the Buddha vibes. On the enlightened, the enlightened one, the one come to bring, like you said, not to, not to, what was it, to to awaken? Its purpose was to awaken, right? To awaken, you know, to awaken dormancy, dormancy, yeah. yeah. yeah awaken dormancy. There we go, there we go. And that's the Buddha, that's the Buddha right there. The Sambu, Sambhu, or the Sambo, the black guy, the Buddha, the knowledge, the Bodhi. Yes, yes, yes. Because so, what well, we have to understand, as human beings, right, we are born with that intuition of good and evil. It's with inside of us. When, If you look at a little child, when they're about to do something wrong, even when they're one and two year old, they look around because they know they ain't supposed to be doing this. Once you tell them, like, no, so no, they, even they know at that age when they're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. So you are born with that inside of you. You are born with that ability to to commune with other people in a civilized manner. Mm -hmm. We are all born with this. You see children do it from Jump Street. You take a bunch of children and put them together, and the first thing they go do is play. I don't care if, the, if, if they're pink, purple, blue. There could be 10 different color children out there, and they're all going to go play with each other, don't, and they ain't even going to realize what the difference of the color each other is. Because they are same size. That's all that mattered to them. Mm, mm. The only thing that mattered to those ten those whole bunch of children was they were the same size. And we could all play together and they went and had fun. Mm, mm, so mm. it is within us as nature, as people, to do these good things on earth amongst ourselves. Just like it is in our nature not to. Mm. This is the choice we need to make. The choice factor. Yeah. Of how we are going to treat each other in this world. Mm. And as we can see, greed and power is two of the most dangerous drugs we have on this earth. People talk about all kind of synthetic drugs, whether it's crack, coke, whatever they want to talk about. Yeah, all these things are or a detriment to you know society and people's health and whatnot, I agree. But none of them is worse than greed and power. Because if it wasn't for greed and power, we wouldn't have these drugs to begin with in the first place. Mm, 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 mm. True, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow, wow, wow. That reminds me of, um, the, remember, that, 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 that's in that to the eye? I wonder that said did that send to the eye that Cat Williams? No, you didn't send it. Like oh. you told me about it. Oh, pray the eye because I remember how you told me when I said I said I said, bro, you, you listen to Cat Williams? He's like, yo, that's my he was talking about the marijuana in one of the clips. He said, It's a plant. It's a plant. <laughs> talking about no drugs. Drug is like you had to add some you had some baking soda and some cocaine <laughs> and stir it up. And I don't know about all this. You know, he you know, he's funny. He's funny. He's funny. <laughs> he said, It's a plant. A plant that makes you feel good, makes you makes you eat, you know what I mean? Makes you sleep, you know, makes you forget your problems. He said 
He said something about like if you work in a regular job, like I can see if you're not smoking. But if you are like broke, you don't got no work, like something wrong with you if you're not smoking. The marijuana was made for you. <laughs> Sorry about that, bro. That Cat Williams. I think after the double podcast, I was like, kind of like, I think I was texting, trying to catch up with ones and text here and text there. And I think I had had actually kind of just, you know what I mean? You know, you know sometimes you're like a child, you tell a child, go to sleep, go get some rest. And the child is up and running about and turning about and running about. And then after a while, you see the child just sleeping. You ever see that? Like when a child should go... <laughs> That was me. That was me. I must have like wore myself out. And just now when, you know, when you're talking about the drugs and stuff like that and Cat Williams observation about like what is really a drug and what's just a plant. It's just a plant. You know, his voice. It's just a plant. <laughs> you know, like don't tell me. Okay, here go right here. Yeah. Sorry about this one right here. But yeah. And he, he he's a real brother, man. Um, he, he, and because he can, he can joke, you know what I mean. He puts it in a joke form that make you laugh, but at the same time it make you think. If you're if if you're thinkable, yeah. I just sent it to the eye right there. Apologies on that right there, but it was like they had these little fifteen minute clips. I think he did something on Netflix or whatever. I, I like to check out the full of full because, you know what I mean. He did yeah. real informed. He's like he said, you know they be playing games with us. Like like how are they gonna tell us that? You could tell that they're up to something when they say, like, we have a chicken wings shortage. Like, how are we going to have a shortage of just chicken wings? You know what I'm saying? It's like the wings grow by themselves, you know? <laughs> and we have a chicken wing shortage. You know, he's making these connections. Even he's bringing forth a message. Even if it's, you know, he might be telling a joke. You know, he might be keeping it real. But if you think about it, it's like, yo... Yeah, you know, what kind of world we're living in? <laughs> what kind of world? But here, 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 brothers and sisters, we're going to just seal this up right here, at least this one right here. You know, might just chat for a couple other minutes, but, you know, I'm um, just going to seal this one up right here on what is Yeshua. So what you say, brothers and sisters, if you've seen it this far, was Yeshua a Buddhist or right, the Buddha, right? And Vaughn Benjamin, I, I, I got to put Vaughn Benjamin, just that mystic, the mystic, the mystic connection, you know, the mystic connection, you know. So check it out, like, share, and subscribe. This is Ross Iadonis here with Ross Seymour. You know, we call this just vibes in too. This is just, you know, we just vibes in. <laughs> the vi just what, vibes in. What do you sure say about the vibrations? The the vi the vibrations where the vibration became slow. Right and sluggish, the will, and then man fell. Now we're just vibes and getting the vibration so we can. Yeah, we gotta keep that vibration going. We gotta keep it strong, you know. And ascend and get back up yeah. to the heights. <laughs> we gotta keep it strong. So just remember, people, um, don't look at the messenger too much. Check the message. That's the important thing. Oh, say la.